welcome to the Thumblespuzz workshop slash lab. Today I want to share with you my DIY CNC milling machine project. This got started off a long time ago when I was growing up. My grandfather's a machinist and uh, going to visit his shop and working and seeing him work on projects at, uh, at our home, I got to see some of these machines that just seemed like they could just do anything. You know, you could make anything with them. You could thread, you could... Um, you know, cut out whatever sort of arbitrary shapes it seemed like to me, any kind of arbitrary shape that you wanted. And out of metal, you know, out of something really strong, you know, like uh, modeling clay. So I started going around hunting on eBay and uh, Craigslist and trying to find something. And mostly what I found initially was, you know, a lot of people were selling machines that were out of my price range, complete uh, working units, and I wasn't really in a position to, to spend you know, five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars on a on a, a newish machine. So what I was looking for was more something in the sub what uh, sub thousand dollar range uh, that was serviceable, but didn't necessarily have the computer controls included with it. So I knew that a lot of local companies uh, have these sorts of machines, and they they get rid of them at their the end of their you know, life cycle for them because it's not really worth their time to try and refurbish these things. You know, they have to c commit the time and the expertise to doing that and they're, you know, they, if they have one of these machines, they're in the business of producing parts or servicing other machines or doing that kind of thing so they can't afford to do that. So I knew these things are out there. I knew they're going to waste. Uh, so, you know, I, I didn't get discouraged when I didn't find something right away. For those of you who are interested in getting one of these, also you shouldn't be discouraged either if you don't find one right away. You're competing with some other folks who, you know, like me, were wanting to buy one. And so uh, I found a couple of uh, machines that uh, went up for sale and were snatched out, you know, snatched right away. So be aware of that and don't get discouraged. After a near miss on a uh, on a Series One Bridgeport uh, CNC mill that ended up going to the collar ahead of me for like three hundred dollars, I found this lovely piece of crap here. This is a Shizuoka AN-S 3-axis CNC knee mill. Um, appears to be something like 80s or 90s vintage. I mentioned the Bridgeport uh, Series 1 mill uh, and those are available CNC or, or uh, conventional. And really for a, a two-car two -car garage workshop like mine, that's too big a machine. I mean, the things are seven feet tall. They're like 3,000 pounds. They need three-phase power normally. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of machine. So really, it, I mean, you'd have to be an idiot or crazy or something to go after a machine that was like twice as big as that. But I'm both of those things, so that's what I did. So I call the machine the Albatross because it's kind of a balancing act between being, you know, good luck and, and useful for my workshop and bigger and better things, greater projects, more mad science, and being an unwieldy bur burden hanging around my neck. This beauty weighs 5,000 pounds, which is actually more than a uh, full-size pickup. And of course, there's good things about this kind of machine. It's got a, uh, a three-phase, four-horsepower spindle motor. It works with a Verispeed drive, which is kind of nice. It's like a con continuously variable transmission that you can adjust with, with a knob. Well, mostly you adjust, most of them you adjust with a knob, and you adjust with a pair of vice grips. And for those who aren't familiar with these types of motors, they run at a fixed speed um, based on either 60 hertz here in the US or uh, 50 hertz for most other places. And it's sort of locked into that line speed uh, magnetically. And so to get different speeds to the spindle, you typically have to have uh, different uh, ratios of drive pulleys and you shut off your machine and change the, change the belt around between these pulleys and turn it back on again. This one, uh, because it has this Verispeed drive, which has two pulleys that actually change, dynamically can change their, uh, their geometry, just change the speed while the machine's running, which is pretty handy, it saves a lot of time. This one came with a kind of an interesting electric speed changer, uh, a, chain and, a chain drive uh, control for the Verispeed knob. Operated with a, a an AC motor and a sprocket and limit switches and appeared to be set up to just run at a few different speeds, which is 
wasn't what I was interested in, so I didn't try to uh, restore that. Uh, it was CNC from the factory, so it's got precision ball screws that allow you to move the table around uh, without any kind of backlash, so the old style Acme screws have backlash built in, and so if you're cutting, you always have to um, take the backlash out if you change directions. So it's just something you have to manage as you're working on the machines. These don't have backlash, but there are other considerations you have to deal with. So the plan from here. Well, I don't really recommend starting a project like this without a plan, but that's basically what I did. Obviously I knew I wanted to uh, get the CNC part of it working and uh, be able to run programs and produce parts. When I got it, the spindle motor was not installed, um, which actually ended up being a good thing because e um, even without that installed on the top of the machine, I had to actually pry off part of the garage door frame in order to get it to sort of limbo under there. There's sort of a, a bump in front of my garage. But I did get it in and I did get the uh, spindle motor installed. My landlord already wants to kick me out. Um, I explained to him what this machine was, what I was going to install, and uh, he actually knew what the machine, he actually knew what a milling machine was, he just didn't understand that that's what I was talking about. And so he shows up one day and this thing's in the garage and, uh, well, let's just say he was shocked. Well, that's it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Please uh, take a moment to hit like or subscribe or leave a comment. Uh, especially if you saw something in the video that you feel would be interesting to see more of. Uh, you know, I definitely will be looking through the comments for the video. Thanks again for visiting.